So, so let me ask you, man. You're uh, you're wearing a, a black hoodie, and you've got, I guess, what is that like plaid? What would you call that? Plaid pants? Yeah, plaid. You got a mohawk. I yeah. guess is that is that, a, is that a, or is that a faux hawk? Which what is that? I don't know. It doesn't go all the way down the back. Is it? It's more of a peaky blinder. Maybe? Peaky blinder. Sure. I don't so know. you're like a punk rock guy. I mean, I uh, by default. <laughs> Did you uh, like how? Do, I, I'm 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 asking these questions because I wanted to get into the how anti punk rock everything's become. <laughs> but I'm curious, just the, the context of like what's your what's your background growing up? You've played in a bunch of other bands. How yeah. did you get into punk? I fell into punk rock. I, I grew up in upstate New York, about an hour south in Ro of Rochester, in a little tiny town called Arkport. And there's about 1,200 people there. I had 23 kids in my high school graduating class. Um, and so where I grew up, you know, you had whatever you could get on the radio. And, you know, if you were lucky, you could get a station from Rochester that was playing more rock music. But so I grew up on like metal, like 80s, 80s rock, 80s metal. It's cool, though. Anything that, yeah, I mean, that was my thing. I, I loved that. And, you know, I had a drum set. My dad had got me a drum set when I was in sixth grade. And I didn't do much with it. You know, I didn't, I didn't think a lot of like, oh, you can, you can make a career of this. You know, you didn't think of that stuff in that town. But um, when I was in high school, um, I, you know, I had a band because some guy came up to me in the hallway at school one day and was like, oh, you got a drum set. Um, you know, there's a new kid that moved to town. He plays guitar. We're going to form a band. We're coming to your house because you're the only, <laughs> the only person with a drum set in town. So it was like, oh, okay. There you go. You know, um, so we started playing and, you know, as pretty terrible and just trying to figure it out and put yeah. a couple of beats together. How old were you but, uh, at the time? Uh, this was probably 14, 15. And, how, uh, old you, how old are you now? Uh, 49. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so um, when I was 16, a friend of mine dragged me out to, because there was like my tiny town and then there was the town next, next to us with about 10,000 people in it. And that's where my dad was a music teacher. And so um, there was this band from that high school that was playing, and my friend dragged me out, and the and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go. And here's this drummer that was playing exactly like everybody that I saw on TV or MTV, and like all the stuff that I was like, oh, I couldn't do that. I like, you know, had a block. Yeah. And I'm looking at this guy just shredding, and I'm like, oh, like light switch went off. I'm like, well, if he can do that, I can do that. And I I go home and I said to my dad, I'm like. You have a drummer in your band named Mick Palmasano, and he's like, "Oh yeah, he's a really good drummer." I'm like, "Why have you never mentioned this person <laughs> to me?" And my dad, bless heart, he goes, "What? Well, you've never been very serious about it." And he's like, "He's a really serious drummer." So I meet Mick, and long story short, like I like the next day, I just start practicing. Like I'm like, he he can do it, I can do it. I'm working on everything, and you know, improving by leaps and bounds, and get to be friends with him. And he's moving to L.A. to go to music school. And uh, so, and I'm like, I want to go to LA and go to music school. So a year later, I moved out there with him, and uh, wow. you know, went to you know, yeah, I went from teeny tiny town to Hollywood, sight unseen, had never been out there. We drove out together, and we get to LA, and I'm just like terrified. What, how did you end up playing? I mean, you're. I'm watching this video the other night, Killboy Powerhead, and there's got to be like. I don't know. It's like thirty, forty thousand people. It was just massive. Yeah. Like, how did how do you make you just show up in Hollywood and then how 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 did you get to the from there to there? You know what I mean? I mean th that my buddy kept me alive. Like I got there, had no idea what I was doing. Like we'd go to the grocery store, he'd put something in his cart, I would put the same thing in my cart, <laughs> and he's finally I'll eat whatever at, you eat. Yeah, and he looks at me, he's like, okay, because he was a year older than me and he'd already been there, and he's like, all right you i get it i get it and like took me under his wing like showed me how to survive basically and got me through school and and um so i you know i go through music school and i get out of there and then i start you know busing tables and you know trying to play in bands i was in a, a few different bands and i was roommates with uh ray luzier who's the drummer for corn now oh wow and but he was one of my teachers at school and so we got to be buddies and he's like, Hey, I need a roommate when I graduate. And I was like, okay, great. So move in with him. And he was a real busy drummer. So he was kicking me down stuff that he didn't have time for or didn't work in his schedule. So I started playing with a few groups that way. And, um, you know, did that for a few years and, uh, I'm working at this rehearsal studio and the band face to face comes in 
and then punk rock band, right? And I don't know anything about punk rock, and they're there auditioning drummers, and I'm just like, oh, whatever, it's not my thing. And they get a guy and go on tour, and a friend of mine ended up tour managing them on the tour, and he calls me up a few days on the tour, and he's like, what, what's the matter with you? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, this band was just auditioning drummers under your nose, and you didn't play with them. He's like, you know, you're an idiot. I'm like, well, I don't know punk rock. And he goes, well... He's like, yeah, I know they're punk rock, but they're they're looking for a rock drummer. They want to make a different record. Um, they just borrowed this guy to do this tour. When they get off the road, they're auditioning more people. I'm getting putting you on the list. And I was like, okay. So they come back in uh, to the studio, and I don't have any money, so I just went in there. I got keys to everybody's room. I go in, I stole their live record out of their merch box and learned the whole <laughs> album, right? That's so, one way to do it. Yeah, I'm like, oh, all right, let me figure it out. So, I, you know, you sit there listening to all these drummers audition all week, and, you know, I'm everybody's playing the same two songs and you're like, okay, well, that guy's pretty good. Oh, you can do the fast stuff. Oh, that, that's, that's not, you know, the slower stuff. He's not doing too well. And then they get down to me. And so I, I walk in and I can see it on their faces. They're like, holy shit, we've gone through all these people. And now the kid that parks the cars is coming in. Awesome. <laughs> and we sat down and I'm like, Hey, you guys have been playing these same two songs all week. Do you want to do something else? And they're like, yeah, like, what do you know? And I was like, I know your live record. We can play anything off of that. And so they bust into a song, hop right in, play through that, and bust into another song, play through that. And then the, we stop, and the guitar player looks at me, and he's, like, angry. I'm like, oh, shit, like, I must be doing terrible. And he's like, the hell's wrong with you? You made us sit here all week auditioning all these people, and you <laughs> knew you were going to come in here and do this. Like, what the hell? And, it, uh, it must have been so refreshing for this band to just kick into a song and you go right into it. Then I got to think about it. Yeah. And it was a good fit, like personally. And like, I still love those guys. I went and played with them last year. It was awesome. They, their drummer had a appendicitis out of nowhere. Oh, and wow. they were like, we've got uh, three shows with Jawbreaker coming up. We can't rehearse. We, you know, and I hadn't played with them in like 18 years. They're like, wow can you just come in and, you know, <laughs> learn a couple of our new songs? We'll play the old songs. And I was like, yeah, that'll be fun. So, so, really so cool. well, how old are you when you, when, when this happens? With face to face, I was 20, 23. So you're 23. I mean, you're not even into punk rock. No, no, I didn't. But when I listened to their record, I was like, oh, okay, this is like, it's kind of like heavy metal, but you play it with one foot instead of two. Like, like I get it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And that was one of the things they liked was because I, I'm a tiny person, but I hit really heavy. And so for me, even playing fast stuff, I can get that crack on the snare drum and that, that's what they like. They're like, okay, usually when we get someone playing fast, you know, the faster the song, the quieter the snare drum gets. And they're like, yours doesn't yeah. stop. I'm like, yeah, it's just, everything's got to be about that. that How crack. long did you so, play with face to face? I was with them from 98 to we broke up the band in 2004. And then the last couple of years that I was playing with Face to Face, I had also joined a band called Saves the Day. And so I was doing both bands at the same time, which was just, it was a lot. It was like... I never yeah. listened to Face to Face. My friends all listened to Saves the, Saves the Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, when your story dropped, I had people being like, dude, that's the guy from Face to Face. Holy crap. What the... <laughs> uh, for me, it was like the offspring. I'm like, man, I go skating in the in in you know when I'm not skating outside, I one, one of the songs on rotation was the meaning of life. Mm -hmm. It's like, I man, Ixnay and the Ombre. There's so much of that old offspring stuff that I just love so much. Breaks my heart to hear what happened. But uh, well, let's let's move forward. How do you end up with the offspring? So in 2007, um, I ended up leaving Saves the Day. Like I loved that band and. You know, we, you know, we had put out a record that their fans really hated and then kind of went back and made a, a record that I was really proud of that I thought was really good, trying to kind of get get back in in good form with the fans and stuff. And it was really hard. And, and uh, you know, sometimes in bands there's a lot of drama and, and eventually the drama there outweighed my love for the music to the point where I left. Bummer. And I didn't, I, I was so bummed out and dejected about music. I was like, I told my wife, I'm like, I don't want to play music anymore. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm going to go work at Costco. I'm going to go be a paramedic. I'm going to go do anything else. And she's like, yeah, okay, sure. Why don't you just take a break for a minute? You know? And so um, kind of hung out for a couple months and got 
called for um, this bigger metal band was looking for a drummer and I was like, oh, I'll do that. I want to play some metal. I'm tired of punk rock. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And then my buddy, uh, my best friend called me up and he's a guitar tech to the stars and he's like, hey, I know that band. You're not joining that band. Like, absolutely not. I, like, you, you think you had drama and saves the day. Oh, like, do not do that. He's like, we'll find you something better. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And at the same time, I get a call about go audition for the offspring and i'm like i don't want to play punk rock i don't want to do it so i just ignored it and then come back around about a month later from somebody else like hey offspring's looking for a drummer i'm gonna put your name in i'm like i don't want to do that i'm not doing punk rock comes back around a third time and my wife is finally like hey why don't you just go and meet them and she's like i know you're still sore about punk rock and whatever but why don't you go and get the job and then decide if you want it or not? And I was like, all right, that's pretty good advice because my wife's pretty smart. And so I go down and I meet with them and it, it made sense. And so I, I go back down for, a, I think I had four auditions with them and I'm living up north, Northern California in Chico where my wife is from. And uh, so I'm flying down every time they want another audition. And so I go down and play two songs seems good they call come back next week play these other four songs okay and then every time i'm coming back down i'm seeing like all these other drummers and some people are on the first two songs some people are on four songs like they are leaving no stone unturned looking for people and i get in there and this one guy i'm like i'm sitting in the hallway and listening and i'm like oh wow this guy is shredding this is great and i'm like sounds familiar but i don't know and then they get to the fast song and i was like oh not a punk rock guy not not his thing but still really good and the door opens and it's my old ra roommate Ray Luzier who walks out and he's sweating he looks at me he goes oh of course you're here <laughs> he's like oh this isn't my thing but ever and then you know, at the same time the corn gig was was floating around and I wanted the corn gig oh wow but I couldn't I, I like couldn't, corn too that'd be great yeah I was like I want to play some metal like that's going to be awesome so you know at the same time I end up with the offspring gig which made sense for me he ends up with the corn gig which was perfect for him 